Hi friends, in this class let us revise some of the aspects that we have discussed so far so in the form of MCQ so that uh, it will be helpful for your uh, examination and let's get into the topic. First question is time interval between two subsequent molting. Molting means we know that the insect grows by molting. From one stage to the another, insect has to shed the old cuticle and it has to form the new one to accommodate the new body size. So, exuvia is the old cuticle that is shed during molting and instar is the new form obtained after the molting. So, in between, the timing between one molting and another molting is stadium. We must also remember the another terminology which is parrot, uh, which is the condition of the adult insect. A term it is mostly used to describe an insect within the loosened but not yet shed cuticle. So when the cuticle is not yet shed, it is called as parrot condition, which is mostly after the molting, before the old cuticle shed, especially in the last instar, when the insect is going to be an adult. Second question is Johnson's organ is in dash part of antennae. So antenna it has four parts starting with the antennal socket and scap followed by pedicel and flagellum. In the pedicel the Johnson's organ is uh, present. The main function of the pedicel is to proprioceptive uh, function which means that uh, identifying the body orientation. So whenever insect is uh, flying or doing the doing any kind of activities the knowledge of the insects orientation is mainly done by this Johnson argon which is present in the pedicel so when we are talking about the Johnson argon we have to also understand other cododonal organs so the this cododonal organs means it senses sound and mechanical vibrations so this Johnson organ is one of the cododonal organ. Uh, this cododonal organs are Muller's organ in the in in case of grasshoppers, especially in the short on grasshopper acridiidae, the inner surface of the tympanum is the cototonal organ, which means it is going to sense the sound and mechanical vibrations. So this tympanum in case of uh, in short horn grasshopper, it is present in the abdomen and in the long horn grasshopper, we must be knowing that it is present in the fortivia. And the other form of cododonal organ is a subgenual organ uh, which is present in all the insects uh, in the proximal tibia of each legs. Uh, it is present uh, to find the any uh, vibration in the substrate in wherever the insect is uh, landing the leg it will be knowing the vibrations by means of this subgenual organ which is a cododonal organ it is present in all the insect except coleoptera and diptera we must know this one and the third question is largest part of insect leg is so insect it is having five important segments starting with coxa, trochander, femur, tibia and tarsus. So if we see that the largest part of insect leg it is femur. The fourth question is hyx papilla is present in. So we have seen the different kinds of insect wings in which the hyx papilla is present in. I think you would have guessed it it is present in halters. Halters are the hind wing modification in the true flies. The next question is from the metamorphosis portion. It is the metamorphosis is regulated by. So we are we are sure about what is metamorphosis, which means the transformation of insect stage uh, into different form. There are different types of metamorphosis starting with a metabola in which there will be no metamorphosis examples of the a metabolic insects are silverfish in which the molting continues throughout the life but in other metabolic insects like hemimetabola holometabola and the hypermetabola in these metamorphosis kinds the molting stops when the insect reaches the adult stage 
but in the ametabolous insects the molting continues throughout the life the second type is a hemimetabola hemimetabola means the incomplete metamorphosis in which the young ones are called as naiads especially in case of the dragonflies damselflies mayflies stoneflies they will be having three stages starting with egg naiad and adult in this the immature stage that is naiad is present in the aquatic condition whereas adults they will be in the terrestrial region so here the immature stage and adult stage they will be sharing different kind of territories so it is called as a incomplete metamorphosis because there is no pupal stages present and the next kind of metamorphosis is a parametabola which is otherwise called as a gradual metamorphosis here the immature stage is called as a nymph here also there are only three stages egg nymph and adult but the nymph and adult they will be sharing the same habitat like you could have seen uh, the cockroaches the cockroaches both nymph and adult they will be sharing the same territory the next kind is our well known holometabolous insects 85 percentage of all the insects that is living successfully on earth is holometabolous insects because it is having four stages egg larva pupa and adult so this adaptive functions helped these holometabolous insects to successfully survive so this metamorphosis is regulated by we know that the secretory system of the insect has two main kinds of glands that is exocrine glands and endocrine glands based on the presence of duct the exocrine glands they will be having the duct and they will be secreting the things outside the insect body and the endocrine glands they do not have any ducts and they will be secreting the hormones inside the insect blood to regulate the system there are different types of exocrine glands are there examples are the mandibular glands uh, in the caterpillar which secretes the saliva and there are also sting glands and lag glands these glands they produce the substance with the ducts so they are called as exocrine glands and the endocrine glands there are four most important endocrine glands are there with the neurosecretory cells the first exocrine gland in the brain they regulate all other endocrine glands the second one is the carbora cardiaca this gland actually acts as a temporary storage of the neurosecretory cells secretions and it is also helpful in regulating uh, and controlling the heartbeat and it also regulate the trehalose level which is the blood sugar in insect and the next endocrine gland is the carbora aleta it is a paired gland and attached with the carbora cardiaca and it secretes the juvenile hormone juvenile the name itself indicates that it is something related with the immature stage juvenile means it is immature this juvenile hormone is needed for insects to mature completely before getting into the metamorphosis or transforming it to the other stages so this juvenile hormone present in the egg and the immature stages to increase the maturation or the stability of the insect will be maintained only if the juvenile hormone is present so in the adult stage this juvenile hormone will not present because it doesn't need to multiply any more so to be in short this juvenile hormones are responsible for regulating the metamorphosis because when this juvenile hormone is absent the insect will be transforming it to the other stage and the next one is a prothoraxic gland this is also a paired gland and it is present in the prothorax of the larva as the name suggests and it is degenerated in adults as the insect adults they won't molt anymore so this prothoraxic gland is absent in the adults and the main function of this gland is to secrete the molting hormone otherwise called as the egg dye zone so the neurosecretory cells this 
neuro secretory cells from the brain they activate the prothoraxic glands to secrete the ecdysone so the answer is carboralata which is regulating the metamorphosis and also we must remember this precocin which is anti juvenile hormone so when this precocin is sprayed over the insect during their immature stage it will mold into adult without having maturity so ultimately they will die and the next one is the weissman ring in which the all the exocrine glands like carbora cardiaca carbora uh, aleta and prothoraxic glands they all fused together to produce to produce the puparium hardening hormone in the maggots of the dipteran flies so this one is called as a weissman ring and the next question is only true suture in the insect head is so we have already studied about different kinds of suture so in among that only true suture in the head so which is the true suture so true suture is something that it divides two different parts if we see the all the sutures here the only suture which divides the two parts is post occiput suture which which is dividing head from the thorax so all other sutures are subgenual suture occiput suture this epicranial suture they are all inside the head dividing different segments of the head the next question is the layer resistant to action of molding one another question from the molting part we have seen about the molting process here the when the insect is about to mold it will stop feeding and the insect will become restless here between the old cuticle and the epidermis there will be a gap formed and that gap is called as apolysis and the old cuticle that will be removed will be called as exuvia at the end of molding so which is the part that is resistant to the action of molding fluid so in between the epidermis and the cuticle there will be the fluid that is secreted which is called as a molding fluid this molding fluid will lead to the digestion of the old cuticle and it will be absorbed by the epidermis to form the new cuticle so which part of the cuticle is resistant to this molding fluid which is exocuticle so this exocuticle is resistant to the molding fluid so it will be removed as exuvia during molting how many segments are there in insect head we have studied about the evolution of insect the insect that came from the the ancestor of insects were like annelids like earthworm like creatures once the segmentation started to happen these segmentation grouped into different regions like head thorax and abdomen so this head is fusion of how many segments is the question so we have already seen that it is a fusion of six segments which ultimately made the insect head the next question is bugs have how many stylets and mosquitoes have how many stylets so we already know that there are different kinds of uh, mouth parts the bug type is having four stylets which is modification of two mandibles and two maxillae and the stylets of a diptera it is having six so here the modification of labrum and labium also modified into the stylets so the diptera and stylets the in case of mosquitoes they will be having six stylets and the 10th question is stalked eyes present in so we have seen that the different characters of arthropods in which we have seen the stalked eyes in the crustacea the other characters of crustacea are it will be having 10 pairs of uh, byronomous legs and the other characters like it will be having green glands for the excretion and let's see the characters of the other options here in arachnida the antenna is absent like in spiders the antenna is absent and it has four pairs of legs and other characters like uh, it will be respiring with uh, bug lungs and the next uh, one the diplopod 
So the diplopoda it will be having two pairs of legs per segment, whereas the chilopoda it will be having one pair of leg per segment. And the pison glands it is present in the chilopoda, not in the diplopoda. It will be having the pison glands. Uh, the first pair of legs are modified into the pison glands, and the diplopoda it is not having the pison glands. And the examples of chilopoda, as we know, that's centipedes and diplopoda, it is millipedes. And the next question is match the following. We have to here we can see that the insect and the egg type. The first one is the anopheles mosquito. We know that the anopheles mosquito they lay their eggs in water. So the eggs will be with the float. It will float. And the green lace wing fly, we know that they lay their eggs on the stalks. Which is called as a pedicel, so it is pedicellate eggs. And the headlows in our hair, they will be laying the knit. The egg will be attached to the basement of the hair, which is called as a knit. And the next one is a cockroach. They lay their eggs inside the protective covering, which is called as utica. Two parallel rows of eggs will be there. The each utica will be having sixteen eggs arranged in two rows. The next type is a praying mantis. The praying mantis will be producing the spumaline in which they lay their eggs. And grasshopper, they will be laying their eggs inside soil, so they will lay in the egg pod. And the Culex mosquito, they it is actually it is um, directly matched. It is present in the egg graft. And the next question is larva of mosquito is called as. So here we can see that the tumbler it is a pupal stage of mosquito and it is the only pupa that is active. So we know that the pupa is a, a resting period in all the other holometabolous insects, but in case of mosquitoes, the tumbler it is active pupa, and the chrysalis it is a, it is we know that it is a pupa of butterflies where it will be the abdomen of this pupa will be attached with the substrate by means of the cremester and the optic pupa it is a pupa of moth and the wriggler wriggler is the larva of mosquito transport of flightless insects by other insect is called as first one the ballooning it is the young larva are blown on their silken thread by the wind so the young larvas of the gypsy moth and the spiderlings they normally produce the silken threads so when the wind is blown on the silken threads they will be transported to the other places so it is called as a ballooning and the transport of the flightless insects here the question is the transport of flightless insect by other insects is called as a foracy here are examples if we see that the mealybug nymphs so mealybugs cannot move uh, long they cannot travel long so it is transported by the black ants so we know that the mealybugs they produce the honeydew which is a sugary substances to attract the ants so when the ants are attracted and feeding and it will be get benefited from the mealybug and the mealybug will be get benefited from the ant by getting the transport that's all about today's class guys. I hope this video helped you and let's see you in the next video. Bye bye.